Hello everybody back again and how are you today? Hope you're well. Um, more or less on time when I said my next review would be. But yeah, this is for Paradise Towers in Doctor Who Season 24. And for me, this marks the biggest leap in directing and acting and editing in all that lot since Horns of Nymon and Leisure Hive. It feels like a new show in many aspects. It feels a lot fresher. Andrew Cartmel, uh, this was the first story that he was able to really get his teeth into a script editor. Uh, adapted from the novel High Rise. Uh, this is written by Stephen Wright. Uh, basically, it was written before Sylvester McCoy's cast as a doctor, just like uh, Time and Varani. But unlike Time and Varani, so Esther McCoy was really able to get his teeth into this one, really able to portray the Doctor he wanted to portray in this one. Uh, there are times when he's clowning around, uh, clowning around, not around, around, he's clowning around. There's other times when he's uh, manipulating, being really manipulative. And this is really, this is the genesis of the Doctor, of the seventh Doctor that we all remember. And many of his love, myself included. Um, Bonnie Langford is great as Mel. For the majority of the story, uh, the Doctor and Mel are separated. Uh, Mel even gets her own companion from this story in the character of Pex. Who, <laughs> I like him. Basically, he's written as a bit of a coward. He's always trying to do the right thing. He's, he's not a bad guy, whatever. He's, he's trying to be a hero because he didn't want to fight in the war that gets mentioned in the story. And he just keeps fucking things up. And he's a coward. And eventually... Oh no, I won't, I won't give spoilers for those who haven't watched it yet. But yeah, he has he has an arc. Hex does. The other characters in uh, Paradise Towers, they're, they're reasonably well written. You've got the gangs who call themselves Kangs, who are based on different colours. The red Kangs, the blue Kangs, the green Kangs, which are already uh, extinct. And the yellow Kangs, one, the last one of which dies at the start of the story. Basically, they are fighting against each other, but it's not, they're not killing each other. To them, it's just a game of sorts. Basically, we're trying to invade each other's base or whatever. And I like the characters. The characters here are really cool. you got the uh, caretakers, who don't even have names. They're just numbers. Caretaker four two six slash subsection dash whatever, you know they're, they're really cool. They're basically their uniforms make them out to be like little Hitlers. Basically, they're on a power trip, and it's really cool. Uh, Chief Caretaker is portrayed by Blake Great Richard Bryars. It is just having time of his life this one, and I like it. I like what he does with this. I think he's one of the best villains of Doctor Who seen for many years because he doesn't want world domination. He just wants to basically run Paradise Towers as he wants. He is literally a little Hitler. He's even got the uh, moustache. And behind it, behind all of this, there's a bigger threat slurking. I'm not going to give spoilers away in this one because this is one of those where you really should watch it if you've never watched it before. Or even if you have watched it before and fancy rewatch, yeah, go ahead. Pop it on. There was Blu ray, download, VHS, DVD, Laserdisc. Remember Laserdiscs? Was this ever fun Laserdisc? No, I don't think it was. But yeah, it's a decent site. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, I think. For all flaws to this one. Huh, <laughs> flaws. Flaws in Paradise Towers. But it's far superior to Time and Verana. You get the idea it visits its own little world in a greater world. You never see the outside of it, but you don't need to see the outside world because this is its own thing. And it works. It's a really good story. I love the fact that the Kangs have their own language. Um, ice hot for cool. Unalive for, well, dead. Um... Their names aren't normal names, but names like Bin Liners or Fire Escape. I think it's brilliant. I love this story. Actually, no, no I'm going to bump up to 8 out of 10. That's how much I enjoy this one. Mel basically starts off with Mel and the Doctor just 
don't want a bit of a holiday. I want to go swimming. There's no tar uh, no swimming pool on TARDIS because it's been uh, expelled. Doctor expelled it at some point, ejected it or whatever. And we're just looking for a really nice swimming pool. And <laughs> that's that's how it starts. Yeah. But yeah, uh, this is going to be a short and sweet one for me today. Because I don't want to give away too many spoilers. But it's definitely worth watching for McCoy portraying the Doctor how he wants to portray him. Mel is really good in this one. She does her own thing. She's off investigating. She has her own companion in Pex. And she doesn't scream as much in this one. In fact, the few screams that she has are realistic in situations where I'd be screaming. There's a great, great guest cast in this one with some fabulous characters. I love that this world has its own language, but we can understand it. It's just, yeah, 8 out of 10. Paradise Towers is worth a watch. And for me, this is truly the start of the 7th Doctor era. My next review will be for a story I love, one of my all-time favourites, Dart on the Bannerman. Not sure when that'll be. I've got a couple of audios to get through first. But hopefully next week, all being well. Fingers crossed, touch wood. And uh, yeah, see you all soon. Bye.